For more videos, visit for the sake of education.com or become an official student at patreon.com forward slash Daxter Bells. All right, guys, let's do this problem. Let's just replace the loading system acting on the beam by an equivalent resultant force and couple moment at O, which is right here. The first thing you got to notice about this problem is that this beam has a thickness. Don't treat it as a flat as a, as a flat beam because then it won't add up. I made that mistake. That's why I wasn't getting the right results. So don't make my mistake. So the first thing you got to do is find the resultant force. And you know that the resultant force is equal to the sum of the forces. So it's equal to F1 plus F2. I'm going to call this one F1. And I'm going to call this one F2. So let's find the Cartesian vector form of F1. F1 has an X component and a Y component. The X component is this component and the Y component is this component. Pretend that's a straight line. <laughs> and then um, you know that the X is given by the magnitude times the sine of 30 degrees. And it's negative because it's going towards the left. So that's equal to negative 225. And you know that the y is equal to the magnitude times the cosine of 30 degrees. And you know it's negative because it's going straight down. And that is equal to negative 389.7 degrees. Ah, oh, not degrees, sorry. And uh, that means that if 1 is equal to negative 225i, minus 389.7 J and the magnitude it's in Newtons right there. Let's do F2. F2 is going straight up at 200 J. So F2 is simple enough. So when you add the I's with the I's and the J's with the J's, you're going to get that the resultant force is equal to negative 225 I minus 189 point seven J. But they usually want it in polar form. The magnitude of the resultant force is given by two twenty five square plus one eighty nine point seven square all square rooted. And that gives you that the magnitude of the resultant force is two hundred and ninety four point three newtons. And the angle is given by the tangent inverse of 189 over 225, which comes out to be 40.13 degrees. And since it's negative and it's negative on the X and negative on the Y, then you know it's this angle. So if they want the angle with respect to the X, remember you have to add 180. Don't forget. But in this case, this is what it shows us the right answer. So this is the answer for the resultant force. Now the moment at point O, you got to find out which ones are the forces um, creating moments and all of them are creating moments. F1 in the X is creating a moment and F1 in the Y is creating a moment because the beam has a thickness and O is right at the center of the beam and it has a distance of 0.2. So don't forget the moment that F1 Y creates because it's not aiming directly at point O. So the sum of the moments at O is equal to, let's assume counterclockwise is positive, then you got the F1Y times 1.5 because F1Y, sorry, this is the Y and this is the X. My bad. F1Y is turning this 1.5 lever arm and it's negative because it's going clockwise and we're assuming that kind of clockwise is positive plus f1 x times 0.2 because the x1 is turning this tiny little little lever arm right here that is 0.2 plus 200 times 3.5 that's the f2 that is going straight up minus 200, which is this moment right here. So once you plug in F1Y, F1X, 
and yeah you plug them in and you plug all this into your calculator you're gonna get that the resultant moment is equal to negative 39.55 since we were assuming that counterclockwise was positive that means that the moment about o is equal to 39.55 counterclockwise i mean sorry clockwise final answer for the moment final answer for the resultant 